This is epic. I mean, it's like Tucker Carlson. He got out of Fox News and he got out of jail, like in a big way. He's over there interviewing Putin. Trust me, that would not have happened when he was at Fox. I, I mean, I know that. I know that. He actually has said that. He said that somehow somebody got wind that he was trying to interview Vladimir Putin back in 2021. And he accused the NSA of spying on him because somehow he said they knew or they must have had access to my phone, to my email, etc. They knew that I wanted to do this interview. Somehow it had wound up, I guess, circulating perhaps back to the bosses who told him, no way, no how, it's not happening because no, 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 only Chris Wallace gets to do interviews like that, remember? Yeah. Um, fussy little man. I'll, I'll, let, <laughs> I'll let Tucker say it. He had a, a, a couple of choice words for, for Chris Wallace. And look, you know, I'm not sitting here like any kind of huge Tucker fan. I agree with him so wholeheartedly on a lot of things, and I disagree vehemently on other things. But you got to appreciate that we're seeing a whole new side of him. I think you're seeing a whole new side of me, right? I mean, I don't have to deal with the teleprompter anymore. I don't have to deal with scripts. I don't have to send my scripts in and have management sign off and try and change three words right before airtime. That used to happen regularly. 7.55. We were live at 8. <laughs> Trust me, that was not fun. Anyway, so Tucker's like gallivanting all over the world and doing all these different interviews and he sat down with Russell Brand. This is brand new out today, and I want to share some of it with you because he gets pretty testy about a very prominent conservative streamer, right? I'll use that word, a YouTuber, I'll use that word, and well-known commentator, a guy by the name of Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro, you probably know, is the founder of Daily Wire, and he's just exploded online. I mean, just it's just tremendous what he has built. He and Jeremy, by the way, Jeremy's his partner, brilliant, brilliant business guy, visionary, and they are just taking on the world. I mean, heck, they even have a whole venture capital arm where they're investing in entertainment. They've got a new Snow White coming out starring Brett Cooper, the former Disney actress, now turned YouTuber. So they are really visionary thinkers and well, you know, I don't know. Do, do men in this space get a little bit ornery? You know, here's Tucker coming in and he's trying to do this, that, and the other. And he can't help himself. He's taken a couple of digs at Ben Shapiro, who didn't appreciate it. Let's start first with Tucker, who is making some, you know, valid points. Although Ben points out they're completely out of context and he said it's not true, but more on that in a second. Let's listen. Here we are, Tucker Carlson on Russell Brand. I would say two huh. things. First, we have a right to be mad, at least. And let me just, again, speak for Americans, middle-aged Americans, uh, which is what I am. You know, I've got four draft-age children. So if you're playing recklessly, fast and loose with their lives, then I have a right to despise you. And I do. So if you're Nikki Haley who's running for president or Ben Shapiro or half the people I see on television casually mentioning the possibility of nuclear war or sending Americans to fight in the Middle East, or in any way involving us in a war that has nothing to do with prosperity and peace at home, nothing, in other words, to do with us, Americans, then I have a right to call you out and be really offended because it's my family. They live here. It's not a joke to me. It's, there's nothing abstract about it. And that is the difference between what's happening in the Middle East from what's happening in Ukraine, about which I had very strong feelings, but I didn't think there was a realistic possibility that my kids could be enmeshed in it. Now there is. So I think, you know, get some self-respect. I would say to my fellow Americans, get a clearer picture of what's important. Your children are important. Okay, that's number one, your children. And if they're threatening your children, I don't care what their justification is. They're your enemy. That's how I feel about it. Okay, number one. Number two, in the United States, the right defends free speech. For most of my life, the left defended free speech in the United States till about 2014-15, Donald Trump, a lot of things happened. The parties inverted, the wings inverted, the left became avowed enemies of free speech, and it was really up to the right to defend the first, our First Amendment, the right to say what you think is true, not be a slave. Because, by the way, if you can't say what you think is true, you're not a, you're not a citizen, you're not a human being, you're a slave. So the right has been the group defending that sacred, God-given right. With the rise of this war in the Middle East, you're watching people on the right 
say, well, actually, you know, hate, there's a difference between hate speech and free speech. Well, no, there's not, actually. You may hate certain sorts of speech. Certain kinds of speech may be immoral. According to me, I think certain kinds of speech are immoral. Um, but if you're suggesting they should be illegal, you can use the power of the state to make me be quiet and enslave me, then you are again my enemy. And you're seeing a lot of people on the right say that in the United States. And I'm absolutely shocked by it. I can't even believe what I'm watching. And I can't overstate my rage or my contempt for them. Because these are the people, and by the way, if they're not defending free speech in my country, no one is. And we're done. And we're going to have hate speech laws, which again are just laws of criminalizing speech that the people in charge hate, that they're threatened by. That's it. That's all they are. They're not on behalf of some oppressed group. Many of those groups are not actually oppressed, but leave that aside. Maybe they are oppressed, but it's not on their behalf that these laws will be passed. It's on behalf of the people in charge. And that's completely wrong. And you don't live in a free society. You don't live in a society of citizens and human beings. You live in a slave state when you have that. And and the right, the people on the right who are calling for it should be deeply ashamed of themselves. So he had a lot to say there, a lot to say about our First Amendment and the reality that it's not flourishing the way it should in his view. I mean, he certainly has, has lived through it at, at Fox News, I myself at Fox Business, and we see every day in this kind of cancel culture of America what's really going on. But the reason I wanted to play that for you was because what he was saying about Ben Shapiro, saying that he despises Ben Shapiro, despises Nikki Haley, and I know I'm having a little bit of fun with it. He's actually talking about something quite serious, right? And he's talking about the future direction of our country I do believe he's quite a bit of an isolationist, more than more than Donald Trump ever really was or is. I, I think that Donald Trump prefers not to be involved in conflicts, but heck almighty, you know what? If you're going to be, you're going to win and you're going to win big. Tucker Carlson, on the other hand, is much more of the view that unless it's really definitively going to help us, he doesn't want to be there. So perhaps more in that Rand Paul school of thought that we just need to kind of stick to ourselves and what we do and, and maybe just be Switzerland. And um, he, he's articulating that in part as a father, right? Because we all, those of us that have kids or if you have grandkids or you're thinking of having kids one day, listen, I mean, these are very serious issues because are you willing to sacrifice your, your child to, to go to war? And I think, you know, pretty much any American you ask is going to say no. It's one of the reasons why they're having so much trouble recruiting at the military these days. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But it, it's, it, it's essential that we understand why we're getting involved in these conflicts. And so he went so directly for Ben Shapiro, which again, I just find a, a little bit intriguing. I, I think that Tucker and Ben actually see more eye to eye than either one of them might realize. But nonetheless, it's setting the stage for what I think would be a pretty epic debate. I mean, I'd like to see those guys together. Do you know I once had Paul versus Paul? It was Ron Paul versus Paul Krugman at Bloomberg Television. They're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, well, I booked them both on the same day. We got Ron Paul. And Paul Krugman, it was fantastic. I was, I was bringing some life and some spice to business television. There you go. Anyway, let's take a look at what Ben Shapiro had to say to Tucker, and he's inviting him back on the show. So I think this is going to be great. I think he should absolutely go. I think they turn it into an event, and they charge for seats, right? Tucker is simply lying about my positions. I've been calling for a negotiated end to the Ukraine war, freezing the lines of conflict since early on in the war. I have never called for American boots on the ground in Ukraine, ever. I have never called for American boots to defend Israel, ever. I've invited Tucker to sit down multiple times over the past few weeks to clear the air and discuss our differences. He said he's willing, but his team has told us that he's busy for months because of his foreign travel. That offer remains open. Woof. Like I said, this will be a very interesting, fascinating conversation. I suspect they'll actually find that they agree more than they disagree on this one. 